Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so uh, we have been looking at uh, normal shocks in great detail. Uh, we have looked at uh, the shock relations and uh, also on their applications to uh, pitot measurements in supersonic flow, the rally pitot formula and uh, also the moving shock, how to analyze moving shocks. Uh, they can be done uh, by taking uh, properties, uh, I mean writing the equations relative uh, to the shock wave by jumping onto the shock and then uh, the static variables are related by the same shock equations for the stationary shock. So, uh, these are the important concepts. Now, let us apply these concepts to some uh, numericals in this uh, class. So, uh, the first example mm, there is a normal shock in a uniform air stream the properties upstream of the shock wave are uh, V1 is equal to 412 meter per second, P1 is 92 kilo Pascal, T1 is 300 Kelvin. Uh, determine uh, properties downstream of the shock V2, P2, T2, T0, 2, P0, 2. Uh, also calculate the ch entropy change across the uh, shock. So, uh, how to go ahead with this? Um, uh, uh, so, um, we know that uh, shock, uh, the equations for shock are all dependent on uh, the uh, upstream Mach number m1. So, if you determine m1, you will be able to get to all other uh, values. Um, but also keep in mind that uh, about the conservation equations where they can be applied for some quick uh, results. So, here if you look at m1, mm, this is uh, v1 by a1, mm. and this is uh, v1 is 412 divided by square root of uh, gamma that is gamma 1.4 multiplied by 87 multiplied by T1. T1 is 300 Kelvin. This is 1.4 and uh, this turns out to be uh, 1.186. Now, uh, you can look at the tables uh, for normal shock. Normal shock tables are uh, exactly similar. Uh, representation as is for isentropic tables. You have a tabulation of uh, uh, Mach numbers, different Mach numbers and pressure ratio, temperature ratio, density ratio, uh, downstream Mach number. Uh, all of them are given and also the rayleigh pitot formula or rayleigh pitot uh, is also given. So, uh, that is given in the appendices of textbooks. Or the other way is to look at uh, some gas dynamic calculators, uh, they are now uh, very much available. Uh, some of this information was shared to you in earlier classes. So, you could use the same things for, um, they have separate modules for uh, normal shocks. So, you could use that from them, you can uh, generate uh, the values for. Um, the uh, properties. So, now what we need to measure is what is P2 by P1. So, pressure after the shock P2 by P1 for Mach number of 1.186 is uh, 1.474. So, uh, P2 is nothing but P1 multiplied by 1.474. Uh, this is 135. 0.61 kilopascal. Now, 
Uh, next we need to determine V2. Uh, one way to go about doing this is of course, you have to go and uh, calculate M2, M2 is known once M1 is known. Uh, uh, another uh, quick way of doing that is using uh, row 2 by row 1. You know uh, row 2 by row 1, this is 1.3069. In this case, uh, V1 is given already. So, uh, row 2 by row 1 is equal to V1 by V2. So, uh, you can use this to get uh, V2. So, uh, V2 is um, 338, uh, oh, sorry, V2 is 315.24 meter per second. Uh, then, what about T2? Uh, so, T2 is do uh, look at T2 by T1, um, which is 1.12. 7, 8 uh, for this Mach number and corresponding to this you can uh, get T2 is uh, T1 multiplied by 1, 2, 7, 8 and uh, T2 is equal to um, 338 point uh, 35 Kelvin. Now, what is T02 uh, that is T02 is uh, stagnation temperature. Mm. Now, uh, it is an adiabatic flow. So, stagnation temperature will remain constant across the shock. So, T 0 2 is equal to T 0 1 and for T 0 1, uh, T 1 is given, T 1 is given 300 Kelvin and you know M 1. So, you know M 1. So, now here you have to use the isentropic table. So, or you have to use the isentropic relations. So, be uh, very careful here uh, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square. Okay. So, uh, you will see that uh, from now on as we go further into gas dynamics all these concepts will be used together. Uh, you have to apply uh, not only normal shock relations, you will have to apply isentropic relations and uh, they will come together. Soon we will look at um, uh, flows through nozzles and diffusers and uh, there it is a variable area duct problem. So, you will have a problem associated with variable, variable area ducts, but in them shocks can be present. So, uh, uh, do not consider each modules uh, separately uh, as we go through uh, these modules all of them are connected to each other as we go more and more into gas dynamics. All that you had learnt earlier uh, will be used ever more. So, T01 here will be 384.39 Kelvin. So, this remains the same for the shock waves uh, across the shock wave. What about uh, stagnation pressure? Will the stagnation pressure be the same or it is different? Uh, you already know there is an entropy change across the shock. So, P02 uh, will be less than P01. Uh, if you are using tables, P02 by P01 is tabulated. You can readily use the tabulation or you can also do this uh, by using P02 by P2 uh, is uh, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 M2 square M2 square whole power gamma by gamma minus 1. You can use this uh, where you have already calculated uh, V2 across the shock. So, you can express M2 as V2 by A2 and M2 is uh, 0.8549 or this is uh, readily available once you know M1 you can get M2. So, all these uh, uh, properties are uh, tabulated or you can get the relations through online calculators directly they will give you P02 by P01 uh, and you can apply that and get 
uh, to the value of uh, P02 and P02 is uh, 218.6 kilo Pascal. Okay. So, now uh, what is the change in entropy across the shock that is delta S by R uh, this is uh, C P log T 2 by T 1 as R log P 2 by P 1 uh, both of these quantities are calculated. So, you can calculate delta S oh not delta S by R delta S. So, delta S is equal to uh, 9.54 kilojoules per right. Um, so, uh, now uh, we have solved this problem let us go to the uh, second uh, problem. Uh, the second uh, problem is that of uh, a re-entry vehicle is at an altitude of uh, 15,000 meters and has a velocity 1850 meter per second. Uh, a bow shock envelops the vehicle determine the static and stagnation temperature just behind the shock wave on re-entry uh, vehicle center line where the shock wave may be treated as normal shock. Assume air behaves as a perfect gas with uh, gamma equal to 1.4 R is equal to 287 joules per kg Kelvin. So, um, here uh, we know the altitude so it is 15 uh, kilometers you can use a reference uh, uh, atmospheric uh, uh, properties. So, P 1 static properties will be the same as 1.2108 10 power 4 Pascals and uh, T 1 is 216.5 Kelvin ok. So, uh, this property is known to you. Uh, now, a vehicle a re entry kind of vehicle uh, you would have come across such shapes uh, they are usually of a blunted kind and uh, this bluntness is because um, of the extreme temperatures that are seen at the nose of such uh, vehicles uh, when they re enter. Um, so, uh, the speed is known it is nearly uh, it is 1.85 kilometers per second that means in one second it travels 1.85 kilometers is extremely fast and uh, when such fast flow uh, impinges on the body then uh, all the kinetic energy of the gas at the stagnation point can be converted into uh, heat or stagnation temperature and you can get very high temperature. So, uh, the shapes of these bodies are uh, meant to cater to uh, such. So, it is a aerodynamic shaping in order to uh, minimize the effects of these very high uh, temperatures and it is a supersonic flow. So, a shock wave develops about this body and usually over such bodies the shape of the shock is like a bow it will be of this kind. So, that is why it is called a bow shock. We will soon come to the discussions of uh, uh, shocks which are at an angle to the flow like over here and over here. Uh, these are uh, known as oblique shocks. Uh, they are oblique all the way right from all these regions are oblique shocks, but right at the center line. Uh, at the center line uh, where this bow has this curve the, at that particular point if you zoom in uh, then uh, it is just a normal shock and uh, this is the body zoomed up version and here you have a normal shock. 
So at uh, stagnation point or uh, in the region near the stagnation point, uh, properties can be calculated by using the normal shock relations. Uh, flow is uh, subsonic here in this region. So uh, how do we get this now? So uh, you know temperature, so we can calculate the Mach number of the flow it is 1850 divided by square root of 1.4 into 287 216.5 and the Mach number comes out to be 6.27 uh, quite a good high Mach number and if you want to calculate the stagnation properties uh, you know the static uh, stagnation temperature can be uh, calculated directly uh, because T01 is equal to T02 you just have to calculate uh, T01 which is T1 multiplied by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square gamma by gamma minus 1 uh, and uh, you can calculate this T0 you have to put 6.27 here this is 1.4 and we will get T01 as 1918.74 Kelvin. So, that is quite a high temperature uh, considering that the static temperature is only 216 uh, Kelvin. Uh, now, as we are doing stagnation uh, temperature, uh, let us also calculate the stagnation pressure P01. Uh, P01 you can calculate uh, in this case P1 is given to you. So, you can calculate P01 uh, using uh, the Rayleigh Peter formula which is uh, which relates P0 uh, sorry we have to calculate P02 that is after the shock. So, P02 and P1 is what we have to relate and that is related by uh, Rayleigh Peter formula P1 by P02 and uh, this is 0 0.0915 for this uh, particular Mach number. So, you can get uh, uh, P02 is uh, 6.209 10 power 5 Pascals. Okay. So, this is what you get. And in order to calculate uh, temperature T2, uh, static temperature after the shock, you just need T2 by T1 for a Mach number of 6.27. Uh, so, uh, you can use that and uh, get to T2. So, T2 is equal to uh, 1858.2. Uh, 6 Kelvin. So, uh, so this involved uh, looking at uh, the stagnation region of a uh, body uh, where uh, the shock can be treated as a uh, normal shock. Now, let, let us do a uh, problem on uh, moving shock wave. So, a normal shock moves at a constant speed of 500 meter per second into a still air at uh, 0 degree centigrade and 0.7 atmosphere. Determine static and stagnation conditions uh, present in the air after the passage of the wave. So, the wave passes, so it is moving um, at a speed and W is equal to uh, 500 meter per second this is the speed and uh, T1 uh, is given it is 273 Kelvin and uh, P1 is given is 0.7 atmospheres. Uh, so, uh, how to do this problem? It is a moving shock problem. So, in order to do a moving shock problem, you have to um, do uh, the transformation so that you sit on the shock or move relative with the shock and then it becomes stationary and uh, so 500 meter per second is imposed in the opposite direction 
and uh, here you have a mass motion so you will get 500 minus up as uh, uh, the speed behind the uh, gas uh, behind the shock. So, now uh, let us see what is the Mach number of this uh, shock m s is w by a 1 which is 500 by square root of 1.4287 multiplied by 273 Kelvin. Uh, this is 1.51. So, this is the Mach number of the shock. Once you know Mach number, you can find out P2 by P1 and T2 by T1. Mm. P2 by P1 is 2.493 and the T2 by T1 is 1.3269. So, rho 2 by rho 1 is uh, 1.8792. So, uh, now once you know these ratios is uh, uh, straightforward to get P2 1.7451 atmospheres and the T2 is uh, 362.2 uh, Kelvin. So, now uh, what is the velocity uh, of the wave uh, behind uh, the gas? We need to behind the shock uh, velocity of the gas behind the shock. Uh, we need to know this in order to calculate the stagnation conditions as we had discussed before uh, stagnation conditions should be calculated separately. So, uh, we can uh, do that by using uh, this condition w minus u p by w is rho 1 by rho 2. Rho 2 by rho 1 is known this is 1.1.879. 1. 1. So, 500 minus u p 500 is equal to 1 by 1.879. So, u p turns out to be Mm, 233.92 uh, uh, 9 meter per second. Now, you know T2, T2 is known, so you can calculate what is uh, M2, M2 or uh, M2 after the shock passes over is UP by A2, which is uh, 233.929 divided by square root of into temperature multiplied by temperature which is 362.24 Kelvin and uh, this Mach number uh, turns out to be M2 is uh, 0 0.613 and uh, from the isentropic charts for uh, 0 0.613 Mm, or uh, nearest values to 0 0.61 you can calculate uh, what is P2 by P02 this is 0 0.7759 and T2 by T02 is 0 0.9301 so you get P02 is 2.249 atmospheres and T02 is 389.46 Kelvin. So, you get the stagnation properties across the moving shock. So, moving shock problem uh, when one is doing, uh, uh, one has to be really careful that you use the appropriate uh, transformations, uh, look at the frames of uh, references. Um, to get the correct uh, answers. Uh, these uh, static uh, property relations are the same as that of a uh, normal shock, but uh, stagnation properties have to be calculated uh, in the fixed frame of uh, uh, reference. So, we have done uh, three problems uh, as examples for 
uh, normal shocks and uh, moving shocks. From the next class onwards, we will look at unsteady flow problems. Um, normal, the moving shock is a part of it, but there is much more to it. So, uh, an example of that is the uh, shock tube itself. So, we will look at that in the next class.